And Haka is, is it about New Zealanders? <laughs> we had two very good wingers and Joelle Vendetti and one person called Jonah Lomu. To meet probably the greatest man I've ever met, Nelson Mandela. Um, and what he did in 95 by, by using sport as a mechanism for change um, was quite phenomenal. Hello, my name's Sean Fitzpatrick and these are my Jersey Tales. Every boy in New Zealand dreams of being an All Black, and I was no different. I had one benefit though, my father had been an All Black in the 1950s. And just over here is his original jersey. I'd never seen this jersey until Dad passed away 15 odd years ago. And we went down to New Zealand for the funeral, we came back up, went to our local pub for lunch, and as I walked in, this very smartly dressed Welshman came up to me and said, Hello, my name is Alan Peterson. I'm very sorry to hear about your father, but I have his jersey from the 1953 All Black Wales game. I was like, wow. Not a game Dad really wanted to remember, because that was when the All Blacks last lost to the Welsh in 53. So I started at College Rivals New Zealand. Unfortunately, I haven't got a College Rivals jersey on me, but the school I went to was Sacred Heart College, and this is my first 15 jersey that we played with at Sacred Heart. It was a very special jersey. Gave me a great grounding. You know, Dad said to me, he says, son, just enjoy yourself. So that's Sacred Heart College. Auckland uh, holds a special place in my heart. So from Sacred Heart to, to the University Club, you then get selected uh, for the Auckland and we had major success through the 80s and 90s. I think we had 14 All Blacks, uh, great All Blacks, Gary Wetton, Alan Wetton, uh, Grant Fox, John Kerwin, all these names just roll off my tongue. So great memories of Auckland and still very much involved in Auckland rugby. My first All Black jersey, 1986. In June 1986 we played against the French at Lancaster Park. Uh, my coach that day was uh, Sir Brian Lahore, and I can remember walking into his room and he gave me this jersey. I was like a kid in a candy shop. And he said, he said, Fitzy, he said, the first time you pull on this all black jersey, make a mental note of that feeling. Every other time you pull on the jersey, try and recall that feeling, the excitement you get. I gave the Silver Fern a little kiss um, every time I played for the All Blacks. And I always remember as I was walking out, he said, oh, there's one other thing, Fitzy. He said, you are expected to win. When I became an All Black in 1986, um, one of the benefits for us, <laughs> um, not being a Maori, was that we didn't have to do the haka, because it wasn't done. Uh, in New Zealand, it was only done when we, when we travelled. At the World Cup in 1987, it was the first time the All Blacks had toured New Zealand. Uh, so Wayne Shelford, Buck Shelford said, right, since we're touring New Zealand, um, we'll do the haka at home. He said, but if we're going to do the haka, um, you, looking at us, all need to know the significance of the haka and to make sure we did it properly. And we did. And it's such a powerful tool. It's a wonderful, motivating way to start. And I love the way they're doing it now. They, they've got better and better. Uh, they really, it really means a lot to them. And, and haka is, is it about New Zealanders? And the All Blacks are doing their haka. Um, 87 we, we uh, played uh, the World Cup at, at home. And I think one of the jobs we had to do in 87 was win back the nation. Uh, because the previous year, in 1986, the All Blacks had gone to South Africa. So the country was literally divided down the, down the middle, middle in terms of the apartheid issue. I think the opening game against Italy at Eden Park, I think there were 17,000 people, which was a telling factor in terms of, of how New Zealanders felt about the All Blacks. And, and by the end of it, when we played France in the final, um, the stadium was full with a lot of very happy Happy New Zealanders. Um, I became an All Black captain in 1992. Uh, I was 27 years old. Uh, didn't really want to be All Black captain. I was quite happy just doing what I did. I was thrown on the deep end, really. 
and we had lots of, of new players. We'd just been knocked out of the World Cup in 91. Um, so we had a bit of a clean out and a lot of young, young guys came in. Was I a great All Black captain? I, I, I enjoyed it more as I got more involved and deeper into it. I think it definitely made me a better player. Uh, the responsibility of captaincy. I was fitter, I was faster, I was stronger. Um, because I had to be, because I wanted to keep up with the young kids and I wanted to, to make sure that they um, under, understood what standards were needed. I was sitting in my room on the Friday night before we play Ireland and in a room by myself, which is, which is not a lot of fun. And one of my great managers uh, came to the door and his name was Sturge. And he, I opened the door and I said, good day Sturge. He said, how are you doing, Fitzy? There's a coal miner from the west coast, and I said, uh, I'm Sturge, I'm okay, mate, not, not great. He said, are you enjoying this gig? And I said, uh, not really. He said, you know why you're not enjoying it? And I said, tell me, Sturge. He said, because you're not being yourself. You're trying to be somebody else. You're trying to be Buck Shelton, or you're trying to be Andy Dalton, or Gary Wetton, or whoever. Just be yourself. And it was probably the best advice I ever got, in, in life in general. I have this one here as a bit of a reminder. Yeah, we're funny old beasts, the All Blacks. We tend to remember the games we lose more than the games we won. Uh, this is uh, 1994, uh, when we lost a series in New Zealand, I was a captain, uh, to the French, uh, when they scored the try from the end of the world, uh, to win the game in the last minute. And this is, this is uh, that jersey from that game. Um, and then moving over, moving over here, this is sort of into the, moving into the professional era really. The, you can just see up behind there, Francois Pinard's jersey from, from 1995, the Rugby World Cup, which uh, lingers in the back of my mind, sort of 26 years on. So uh, this is my World Cup jersey from 1995, from the final. Um, Francois and I swapped, we had, we had two jerseys each. You know, I, I still say it was a lost opportunity. Um, we had chances in real time to win that game. Um, but unfortunately, we, we didn't. And I look back now with, with great fondness to meet probably the greatest man I've ever met, um, Nelson Mandela. Um, and what he did in 95 by, by using sport as a mechanism for change. Um, was quite phenomenal. You know, one team, one country, and the electricity that he filled the stadium with when he came onto the stadium wearing Francois's number six jersey uh, was just so powerful. And I know disrespect to our Prime Minister uh, at the time as a gentleman called Jim Bolger, and I often say to him, I said, sorry Jim, no disrespect to you, but if you had walked onto the stadium wearing my jersey, uh, I don't think it would have had the same effect as Nelson Mandela had wearing Francois's jersey when he walked on. So great memories, um, even though we lost, the greatest World Cup I'd ever been to, um, just purely because what it did for the nation, how it united a nation. Good memories. 1996, the start of professionalism after the most amazing World Cup. And these in 96, 97, <laughs> that was, God, that looked funny. Uh, was the start of franchise rugby in New Zealand. We have five franchises and uh, we were the Blues franchise. We had two very good wingers and Joely Vinderi and one person called Jonah Lomu. And it was such fun, just 12 teams. Most of us were still working. I'm a builder by trade, you know, so we'd work during the day, train in the evenings, um, and we had some, some great times, I remember. <laughs> we trained in the morning, I think six o'clock till 7.30. We'd done our fitness training at Eden Park, headed home, got changed. I'm heading off down to work. And as I'm pulling onto the motorway, up next to me uh, is Carlos Spencer. Our number 10, who's the, who's the racing kid on the team, and you know, uh, he had his new ute and a jet ski on the back heading out to the beach. And I'm looking at me and I'm looking at him thinking, hmm, yeah, a bit different. Um, but that's what, that's what they were like in those days. Today, and Sean Fitzpatrick ready to bring the All Blacks onto the field. Uh, has rugby changed uh, from becoming professional? I, I don't think so. I think, it, particularly the All Blacks, um, we're quite old school. Um, 
but we're very, very professional in terms of our preparation, in terms of the data that's needed to be successful. But at the end of the day, uh, it's about commitment and, and wanting to be the best. And luckily with the, with the all black jersey, um, in terms of jersey tails, um, our legacy is paramount. And as long as we're uh, winning on the field, we'll be winning off the field. And that's what we need to continue as custodians of our game. Um, we need to make sure that every All Black gives the jersey back in a better state than what he found it in. Okay, well thank you for listening to my Jersey Tales. Like, subscribe and hit the bell for notification. My Jersey Tales, guy. Hello, I'm Martin Castrogiovanni and this one are my Jersey Tales. Lomo was going with me and I remember I was looking at him and saying, I can't believe I am here today. After 20 minutes, I think, of half an hour, they break my ribs. I know people say a lot of bad things about me, but I know the truth. Unfortunately, I, I live maybe the rugby in the way I didn't want it to, but that's life. I'm a rugby player and you need to get on in life and keep going. This is our not rugby jerks. Everything I have today is because I play for Leicester and, and I never can forget that. And then I get emotional as well.